pastors. We go and we find out how to preach, how to teach, how to do things correctly from whom? From the scripture and from a true preacher and teacher. If we go with your marriage, Instead of asking your husband, instead of checking the boxes and seeing, am I a good wife? Am I a good husband? Did I say something? Did I do something? We go to another man, and that man says, well, dear, you're 21 years old, and I kind of like what you're wearing, and it becomes a worse problem than it would ever been before, right? So the problem becomes we take churchianity at its face value, and we say, Church Andy tells us this is the way we're supposed to live. This is the way it's supposed to look. This is what's supposed to happen here. Right? But when we go to scriptures, what does the scripture tell us? Let's go to Mark. The same day went Yeshua out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered into him so that he went... So the great multitudes came to him. He didn't have a problem at times to bring the people in because what? Because they was wanting healings. They was wanting people from the dead. They was wanting to eat. They was wanting to live. Right? How many people want that today? People say, well, what's the difference? Why, why is it so much different between then and, and today? Because obviously in that day... People wanted something. Today people want something, but it's not eternal life. It's not tomorrow. It's not tell me about the Messiah. It's not tell me about the Creator. It's tell me how I can get rich. The church has taught me if I donate one dollar, I get ten back. Tell me that program. It's a scam, and everybody knows it. The world knows it more than the church folk know it. But the church folk are all in. It's like a casino. Hey, what's a hundred get me? If a dollar gets me ten, what's a hundred get me? Well, if I pay my tithes, and what's the first thing they say when something goes wrong? I've paid my tithes. Where does it say that you paid your tithes? That everything's okay. That that will answer your prayer. Sadly, in most of these cases, their prayer is an abomination. If they're eating unclean, if they're coming there unclean, if everything they do is unclean, then what does that mean? When they raise their hands, even their prayer is an abomination unto him, right? And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. The preacher, the pastor, the so-called rabbi, which, by the way, call no man rabbi. Why? Because we're all learning. We're not masters at this. If you're a master at this, then you should be like Enoch. You shouldn't be here, right? If you're getting this down, then you won't be here. Death will not touch you. But for most people that's already so far in the sin ditch, our worries are how to get out of sin. What is sin? Sadly, in today's world, we're worried about what is sin. What are we doing wrong? Why is our life this way? 
most people don't have to worry about what's on their left and their right. Churchy Andy says, knock on the door. Hello, I'm John. Would you like to come to church? Do you have problems? Do you have money in your pocket? We'll take it from you. Well, gee, that's going to help out so much in the household where I have five kids and I can barely feed them. That's going to help me so much to come give you money. Why should I give you money? Oh, because, you know, we got to pay the bills. And six months later, hey, can we get around to my problems? Probably not because you didn't pay your tithes last month. Yeah, I was broke and I lost my job and I got laid off. And yeah, but, you know, we only kind of talk to members around here. So what do we see going on? The sower goes forth to sow the seed. We go out there and we plant something. We don't talk to it for the next six months, do you? You go out there and say, Oh, Mr. Carrot, please grow. Oh, Mr. Green Beans. And you talk to it and talk to it and talk to it. So why do we go and beat on somebody's door and talk them to death about what they should be baptized, how they should be baptized, what they should do, and the essential thing of what we are saying is fear. What if you died tomorrow? What if you died tomorrow? Well, what if the rapture's tomorrow? What if, what if, we, we what if people to death, almost literally, because why? It's a fear. It's a chaotic system. And even when they come in, say they're sick, they have a problem, something goes wrong, even when they come into the system, what happens? They find out that, oh, gee, six months later, a year later, that, well, you know, the rapture didn't happen. I'm over my fear. I feel better now. And this really ain't helping that much. So now what happens? So now they're not fear. They're in, their chaos is gone. So they lose their system. They lose their religion. Because what brought them where was, what if the rapture happens tomorrow? What if, what if, what if, what if? That ain't the way we're supposed to live. That ain't the way you plant a garden. What if you never grow? Oh, what if you never grow? Oh, what if you never grow? People think you was nuts, right? You sit out there and cry and, and boo-hoo and, and talk to the green beans all night. What's he doing? Oh, I don't know if they'll ever grow. Maybe if I cry on them. And that's the same thing we do with churchianity if we're not careful. Maybe if I pray about it, maybe if I, maybe, 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 and we don't even bother reading the scripture. We're so busy making up things in our head or listening to what the preacher said. The preacher says, if you knock on the door like that, they'll answer. So don't knock on the door like, don't do that, right? How many weird things do we know and we see happen like that? And we laugh and we think it's funny, but sadly it really goes on. Don't say what you think. That's my job. Right? Don't you go to somebody's house and tell them what you feel like saying. You just tell them to come to church. That's my job. It's amazing the people that will tell you to your face... Don't tell me what to do. I have a husband. Don't tell me this. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. And it's real scripture. It's a real head covering. It says not to mar your beard, not to do this. The same people will go and listen to someone. And, and because the way it was delivered in a deceitful, nasty way, you catch on to it and take it with you. But when it's delivered straight truth, oh no, I don't like straight truth. That's too harsh. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they scorched and became, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. 
But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Now stop. This does not mean the church members. Because many people say, oh, well, see, look. Right there, if you're doing your job, where's your hundredfold? Where's your sixtyfold? Why is nobody with you? Why is nobody beside you? But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Now, whether we are here, we're uptown, we're at Walmart, we're at Cato's, wherever we go, that person that's seen our smiley face, that person that's seen that we have shalom, that person who listened to us, they may not go to your church. They may never come to your assembly. You may never see them on the Sabbath day. But just like we see the garden grow, whether you go out there and stare it down or not, it's going to grow. Or it's not. Right? When you go out there, there's going to be a corn stalk or there's not. It's a matter of time. You reap what you sow. And just because that thing doesn't come in the house and tell you thank you for being a green bean stalk, the same thing we see here. We profess Yahweh. We profess Yeshua, but not in a manner to its fence. We don't see the Messiah going and saying, and if anyone, of anyone, he could have been the one saying, listen to me. Shut up and listen. The kingdom is here. If you pass this boat, if you don't get this right, if anybody should have been a hammering, it could have been him. But did he show us that? Uh -huh. Now I'm on top. The no, he never did that, did he? So why do we have Rod Parsley's and Joe Osteen's and all these people that are in between trying to parade around like they're what? See, what happens is we get a different gospel. We get something that it looks like it's a good garden. It looks like that's a good thing. The ground's tilled up. It looks awesome. It looks like it should grow. But then we find out them are hybrid seeds. It's a mixture of the Catholic. It's a mixture of the Pentecost. It's a mixture of this. And let's throw a little bit of Judaism into it just in case. And we get this hybrid garden and we wonder why everybody's so confused. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So the point in case here is what? Just because you go somewhere, when the disciples went places, when Yeshua went places, those people did what? They didn't follow him to death. Did they follow him to the stake? The only ones we know that followed him was the disciples. The rest of them went back home. They went back to where they lived. They went back to where they was from. And there they talked to Yahweh. From there they prayed. From there they got their self right. The same thing in today's world. We talk to people. It's up to them to have a relationship with the Creator. It's up to them to talk with him, to get it right. In church, Andy, you must come to my church or you're just going, right? If they don't come to this building right here, that's what we get. If they don't come do it this way right here, if they're not a part of this right here, but that ain't what he said, is it? And the disciples came and said to him, Why speak us out? into them in parables. They didn't really understand. Do you realize the disciples walked with him, slept, ate, was around him, and they still didn't get him? Obviously, look at Judas, 
Look at Peter. They did not really get the whole program all the time. Because they asked him. He had to plainly tell them a lot of times what was going on. But yet we people we have people that say they're rabbis and they're this and they're that and they don't get it either and they will plainly say they don't get it. But yet they'll turn and call themselves pastor, rabbis, never called, never anointed, never of the creator, but because of money, because of their daddy, because of whatever. Well, you know, the Hershons are the Pentecostal gurus, and you know this, and it's, it's about names. But what name should we be using? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Like it or not, believe it or not, <clears throat> some people don't get it. They're never going to get it. It's frustrating for some of us because we go, Hey, why don't you understand what I'm saying to you? They don't understand it because they don't want to understand it. It's not because you don't know how to speak to them in their language and, and we're not supposed to go overboard because somebody comes and tries to give you some kind of communication. What happens if it goes too far? Somebody sends you a message and says, Hey, it's me. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, it's me. How you doing? I know. Hi. Hello there. How are you? Hey, hey, it's me. How you doing? Look, I'm busy right now. What do you want? People calling, right? You're in the middle of this, in the middle of a message, and people are calling and calling and calling. Hey, I'm from India. Hey, I'm from Hey, Hey, that's nice, but I'm trying to do something right now. They don't want to hear it, <clears throat> right? They don't want to they don't care they want you to talk with them if we're not careful we do the very same thing in reverse we want you to talk about church right drop what you're doing and listen to me who are we to come up to somebody with that attitude what if they do the same to us right there's a time and place for everything, and for most of us, because of our churchianity background, thanks, the world should stop because we got an epiphany. Because we, was it even from the Creator or was it from the enemy? Is it chaos? Is something going on? Or is it, see, many people move to places and do things, but it's not really the right thing. And the fruits of it prove it. I'm moving to Arkansas. I'm moving to Tennessee. I feel led to go here. And three years later, broke, upset, busted, toasted, whatever you want to call it. They go crying out and not wondering why. I'll tell you why. Because you was never really led there. Not by the Ruach. That's why. Because a lot of people, they hear a man... They hear a voice, or they hear what they want to hear, and huh, let's move to Hawaii. That's awesome. Because really what I'm going to do, I'm not going to say it, but what I'm really going to do is sit on the beach and do some scuba diving and do, but we're really going to do it for the church thing. Right? Sure we are. And then everything goes bad because you did it for you because you did it because it was another adventure right now I'm not saying you won't go to places and talk teach preach whatever but a lot of times our emotions are what we want end up doing more than everything else right what we want to do is what we're going to do if it kind of comes in between, we might have to say a prayer. And how many people do whatever before the prayer ever comes out? 
<coughs> well, I'm going to pray about this. I think we should pray about this. And I'm leaving in the morning. <laughs> right? Let's go on. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not. And hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. We see in today's world it's getting worse and worse. You can tell somebody to do this, to do that. They don't hear it. They don't want to hear it. They want the easy fix. What fix is this? The easy way. Take a shot. Do whatever they say. Do this. Do that. Just make it go away. They don't want to hear the truth of the matter. They don't want to hear, let's pray about it. They don't want to hear if it costs me anything, if it takes anything, if it's going to go make me do something. If it's going to get me off the couch. Whew, that's a hard one already. Why does church Andy work so well? You go once a week, maybe twice if you got time. You go once a week. You go on Sunday when you really ain't got nothing better to do anyway. You're hoping it rains so it don't ruin your fishing time. And you go and you play nice and you play like the person you ain't all week long. And then you leave and then you have everything that the Bible says so you think. Right? In your mind, you think you're alright. But you really know... That's why you keep coming back. Because that fear factor, right? Therefore speak to them in parables, because they see, they sing, see not, and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. They don't get it. They just don't get it. So what do we do? We tell them the truth and we leave it at that. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear. Right? You'll hear it. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. If you believe it. But if you believe, you have to believe it all. Make sense? You have to believe each and every bit of it. You can't believe whatever you want to believe. You have to believe what the scripture says about it. And this is where so many, so many miss the boat. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross. It's a shame, but it's the truth. This people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes. They don't want to see it. And should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. <gasps> oh, it's whatever. Oh, we're scared to death. Oh, let's get everything. And I should heal them. What's the way to being healed? What's the way to getting rid of these things? Listen, open your eyes, and hear it. But everybody has their own way to cure cancer. Everybody has their own way to cure this. Every doctor, every person, every specialist, who they go to. Put it to you this way. And I've seen it. I'm not saying everybody. But somebody gets cancer and where they run to? A doctor. And the doctor says, well, here's what the steps are. Here's your projection of life, here's this, here's that, and what do people do? Then they go back to church and they tell everybody at church and pray for me. But they stay on the same thing the doctor told them to do. 
No matter what someone at church says, they stay on that same thing the doctor says to do. Even if they're healed, once they go back and they find out they're healed, they still play with the doctor program. You see what's going on here? If we're not careful, we play these same games. We are as children because we are like children. That's what he tells us, right? My little children. He doesn't say my adults, my smart people, my geniuses. No. We are like children and we play as children. But blessed are your eyes for they see. For the ones that see this, for the ones that care to see, they're the ones that are blessed. And your ears, for they hear. We should be praising him. We know it. Instead of spending all of our time worried about them making our relationship better with him. Thank you, Father. I can see. Thank you, Father. I can hear. We want to listen more instead of <clears throat> Man, Johnny, I've tried to talk to Johnny. I, I've tried to talk to Johnny, and Johnny just won't listen to me. What can I do to make Johnny listen to me? Johnny, if you're out there, can you just call me? Johnny, please, Johnny, listen to me. Oh, Johnny, you just don't know, Johnny. And we ruin days about that, right? Why won't they listen to me? They don't want to listen to him. Has nothing really to do with you. You're the messenger. Stop putting yourself above where you belong. They just won't listen to me. They're not listening to the message. Right? It's like a guy going to the king and handing them the message and he cuts his head off. What'd I do? I didn't like that message. I delivered it to you. I was a good servant. And you cut my head off? That's what we do to each other. Right? Well, bad messenger, you die. It ain't my fault. We have to understand where we fit in. Let's go on. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you have heard and have not heard them if you really think about that isn't that something else for verily i say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have de have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them Isn't that amazing? That people have desired to see this. They wanted to see it, that they don't get it. How do we know that these people haven't come and said, hey, and prayed and wanted, but they just don't get it? Because why? Because fishing, playing church, their wife, their kid, their house, their dog, their cat, their whatever was more important. And now that they're 80, now that they're 100, now that they think they're going to die, now they want to know. Or they want to know for other reasons. They want to know because, hey, mm, let me figure out a plan because this book sells. Let me figure out a plan because this will work. Let me figure out a plan for this reason and that reason. You must not fear them, for Yahweh, your Elohim, himself fights for you. If we're not careful, we don't even get what the scripture says ourselves. We're too busy worried about the world. We're too busy worried about what the world says. We're too worried about what they're doing and what's going on with them. And that comes into our timeline. 
For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear these things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and Annan with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. Don't tell me what to wear. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to do things. When the world comes, what happens? Oh, no, no, no. We're going to do whatever they say. When the world comes and says, you're going to do it this way. Well, if we don't do it that way, what's going to happen? Many people proclaim to be Christians. They proclaim that, oh, man, I'm ready. They're ready for all kinds of stuff, supposedly. But what are they really ready for? What are they really doing? What are they really saying? The synagogue of Satan, their father is the devil. The synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and they're not, but they do lie. I'm drafted in, they say. I'm grafted in. I don't do what the Bible says, but I'm drafted in. How are you grafted in? By who? By what? You serve a different God, a different name, a different Bible, a different everything, but yet you're grafted into these people that you make fun of. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some in hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirty. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when... The blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, Ah, he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then? that we go and gather them up? Matthew thirteen twenty nine, But he said, Nay, least while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. But ain't, ain't this what we try to pull off? We're trying to get the good ones, but you bad people get out of the way. And sometimes we don't even know what's in someone's heart. We don't know what's in their thoughts. We think this person is the good one because he looks like what we think is good. Right? The Egyptian looking churchish boy, we think if we do the right tap and dance song, he's going to come to the truth. The guy sitting over there with the beard and the tattoo and looks like a homeless bum, that guy, come on. So who's backwards? Let both grow until the harvest and in the time of harvest. I will say to the reapers, the angels, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Oh, there went the rapture theory. The people to go first 
are the tares, and they are to be bound and to be burned. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among the herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. If we're not careful, what do we do, folks? If we're not careful, we are letting the synagogue of Satan tell us what is what. We are letting the pastors and rabbis and the world itself trying to take the reins and call themselves the church. But the true church, the true assembly, listens to Yahweh. My sheep hear my voice. I know the blasphemy of those saying themselves to be Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desire of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning. Anyone that allows abortion, anyone that allows murder at any level, if you know it causes murder, that's murder. No matter what form a pixie does, so to speak, it comes in. Right? If you know, and it don't matter if you're a doctor, a nurse, or this, or that, or whatever, if you know that this could be a form of death for someone, and you administer it, what does that make you? If I take a gun and throw it in the air and start shooting, and I know that could kill somebody, and people walking around, that's not an accident. It's not an oopsie. We have to be careful with what we let go on and what we say, oh, that's okay. Because we are going to be held accountable for it. Let's go through one more before we close up, right? Matthew thirteen thirty seven, And he answered and said to them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. He tells us clearly what's going on. He tells us right here what it's all about. The Son of Man, the Mashiach, the Messiah, Yeshua himself. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Plain and simple right here. The tares are from the wicked one. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear let him hear again the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field the which when a man hath found he hideth and for joy therefore goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking a goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea, and gathered of every kind which when it was full they drew it to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels but cast the bad away so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth 
Yeshua said unto them, Have you understood all these things? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then they said unto them, <clears throat> Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> is like unto a man that is a householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. What we have to understand is what we have before us. What we have and what we're looking for. And it's not for us to go and separate. Why? Because we obviously don't know how to go and separate. It's not our job. But time after time we go to churches and that's what they try to tell us to do. You go after like-minded. Even the assembly. I want to be around like-minded if we all think the same, then what are we? Obviously, they wasn't like-minded because they didn't know what he was talking about. So what are we to do? Iron sharpens iron, right? We have to sometimes not understand, not agree, because in that, we have to understand that way and this way, but what's the truth? People believe in the rapture. Well, I believe that the rapture could happen tomorrow. Well, <clears throat> the scripture says before any of this, the mark of the beast, the false prophet, the wrath of Yahweh, all has to happen. That's scripture. How do you read it? Right? You have to read it for yourself. That's what the scripture says. Now, these verses say, that those who are wicked, the tares go first. So there's no way you can have a rapture. Nowhere does it say that the righteous rise. It says the wicked, the tares. So in most things, when you don't have people that hear the word rightly, they don't divide the word rightly. They come up with a chaotic, upside down, evil good, good evil, process that's backwards than what's really going to happen. And therefore, when you get to it, like today, they'll never close the church doors. We'll never allow this. We'll never do this. We'll never do that. Ooh! Shut the doors and let's stay home. We're scared. Somebody told us to be scared, so we're going to be scared. Right? We didn't see it coming that way. We've seen the tanks running over the doors and the, all the other things that we was told. See how the enemy does? He's crafty. He comes at a different angle than what you thought because you didn't read it. If you read it, you're not really surprised. You see what's going on. So I hope this is edified. I hope this helps out. If you have any questions or comments, then let us know. If you would like to be immersed, if you would like to have fellowship, or you'd like for us to come to you and have fellowship and talk things over, by all means, get a hold of us. Until next time, may Yahweh bless you. May his continent shine upon you. And may he grant you shalom. Shalom, everybody. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. May Yahweh bless you. Have a great and glorious weekend.